Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Spencer Tillis. And I'm Giselle Espinales. And this is the Delmarva Sports Insider. In this week's episode, we head over to Berlin where the Seahawks were looking to pick up their first win of the year, but could they pull off the upset against Ken Island? And from later, from the gridiron to the hardwood, volleyball rivalry action, the Parkside Rams took on the James M. Bennett Clippers. That was a great matchup, and we had one in Dover as well, as Wesley football was back in action yesterday, looking to keep their perfect season alive, but could the Wolverines get it done? But today we begin the show with the Battle of Georgetown. It was homecoming for Sussex Tech as they hosted their rivals, Sussex Central. Our own technical director, Josh Lynch, was out there hey too, everybody. paying a visit to his alma mater. All right, let's get to the action. Second quarter, the Ravens already up 7-0 to zero and strike again. Justin Hill with a 24-yard touchdown pass to Jamont Matthews. Ravens now up 14-0, to zero, but the Golden Knights respond in a big way. Sean, Sean Savage finds the hole and takes it all the way for the 48-yard touchdown. But this night was all about the Ravens as they would score again and again. This time, Kanai Kane with a 35 yard touchdown. And this game goes to Sussex Tech as they defeat Sussex Central 56 to 35. All right, Spencer, I know in other shows, you and Trey have been mentioned Kanai Kane. And until you see his play in person, Operation Beast Mode. I mean, 35 yard touchdown, a five yard touchdown. Four-yard touchdown, 37-yard touchdown, and I know I said touchdown a lot, and if you lost count, that's four for the night. And besides scoring touchdowns, he made some big plays. Doesn't stop, won't stop, chance of MVP. Let me hear them. MVP? MVP. 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 I mean, seriously, <laughs> we've been talking about this guy. He's a monster. He is, he, that is a full-grown man out there, and he is just <laughs> devouring some high school kids. I'm telling you, you got to watch out for him. <laughs> But the other side is this was another tough loss for Sussex Central. I mean, I know last week we were talking about it. They had a tough one, Dan. That makes about three in a row now for these guys. I don't know how they really bounce back from this one. They just don't seem to have enough playmakers. They keep it close. They play really good defense, but they don't have enough game breakers, and it seems like, you know, time's starting to definitely run out on them. Yeah, they definitely, you know, they did have a come from behind. Added like extra 14 points, but they still ended up with the loss. But it's you know, a tough one. So we'll see how they bounce back next week. But just up the road from there, Caesar Rodney was back in action on Friday when they hosted Cape Penelope, and this was a good ball game right here. A tight one throughout as Tavon Scott finds Jason Weinberg for the Vikings. That gave them a 28 to 14 lead in the fourth. But here come the Riders. Vita Lewis barrels his way into the end zone here from just one yard out, and then all of a sudden we're back to a one-score ball game at 28 to 20. CR attempts the onside kick, but Jerry Harden recovers it here for the Vikings. And that would just about do it after William Gibbs, with the honors, takes it in from two yards out right there. Cape moves to 4-0 as they take down the Riders 35 to 20. And these two might be the most surprising teams in all of uh, Delmarva right now. I mean, Cape, legit. The Vikings, they are for real. On the other side, I mean, it's, it's trouble time right now for CR. They are now at 0-4, something that nobody saw coming, and it's not getting any easier for them. They got Polytech next week, and that is a very, very good Polytech team. I mean, they are in serious danger of dropping to 0-5, and, and if that happens, I mean, you could basically kiss the playoffs goodbye. I don't know how you come back from that. So, I mean, they are in full panic mode right now. I know. I can imagine. We previewed them during the week um, before football season started. I mean, right now I feel I've been on this Vikings bandwagon since we launched DSI, and if I haven't been, I'm still on it. The Vikings have proven week after week they are 4-0 now and are looking better every week. Caesar Rodney, though, scored 20 points on them. You know, the, te the team hasn't – the team has scored a lot of points. Other teams haven't scored points on them. Their defense has been great for the Vikings. But to be able to have – I don't know. I don't know if they're peaking too soon. I don't know. Can we'll we'll see how they those. can carry throughout, but I'm, you're right. I mean, the Vikings definitely, the first four weeks, they've been the most impressive team that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Well, just nearby there, in, uh, down at Snow Hill, James and Bennett was taking on a Seagull Stadium, and the Clippers trying to gain some momentum this season and rack up any win they can. And it starts with LJ Carter with a 49 yard touchdown. Bennett continues to add points on the board, but the Eagles trying to make some big plays, especially on defense. Giovanni Murphy picks off Jacob Lamour here, but looks like Lamour wasn't happy about that one and decides to take things into his own hands. Keeps that one for the 15-yard touchdown, and the Clippers take this one 48-20. to And I have to quote one of Bennett's coaches, Dustin Mills, we take them where we can get them. And they did get this win against the Eagles, but the Clippers still worry me, allowing Snow Hill to score 20 points. Credit to Snow Hill, of course, putting in the effort every game. But the Clippers are now 2-2 two and two on the season and are still in this. I mean, I don't know. There are too many lopsided wins for me. That's absolutely right. I mean, the Clippers might be one of the more unsure teams, I think, in this entire conference. They are 2-2. Two and two. They have a couple impressive wins. They also have a couple bad losses. But my problem with this team is the fact they are just so one-dimensional. You saw it in that game. I mean, they can't throw the ball. But when they get their running game going, 
they can basically compete with anybody, but I feel like they rely on that too much. You have to have the threat of the pass, and this team just doesn't seem to have it right now. And so I don't really know if, if they can get that fixed, and if they can, you know, they might be a threat here down the stretch. But Parkside was back in action on Friday when they hosted a very good undefeated Easton team. The Warriors took the lead here early on as the big fellow Leon Flournoy stretches Ooh. there just across the goal line, takes it in for the score. It looked like Easton was on their way to coaching this thing too. And then all of a sudden this happened. The Rams punt it, it skips and gets just a piece of the returner. That's a live ball and Jason Fox falls on it right there in the end zone for the touchdown. Huge swing of momentum for Parkside. They're right back in this thing down 18 to 12. But Easton would have the answer. Jalen Mahoney would drive them all the way down the field, takes it in on the keeper with just eight ticks left in the half. The Rams kept coming. I mean, this was a barn burner finish, 33 to 32 the final. Wow. And, yeah, seriously. I mean, <laughs> listen, I've been the groupie on the yes, Easton bandwagon bus from the start of the season. We're still undefeated, <laughs> but I mean, I'm not going to sit here and try and say that was an impressive one. I mean, the Rams. Definitely have improved since the beginning of the year, but I don't think uh, they should have been hanging with them that much if the Warriors really are the team that I thought they were. They shouldn't be coughing up those kind of leads if they're as that good as I expect them to be. So a little bit of uh, some ease right now in the Houston. They are 4-0, but definitely. Uh, are you showing them the, the money? Or Monet, that's my boy, <laughs> man. That's my boy right there. I mean, we got to talk about the comeback for Parkside to fall short by a point. It's not easy, but Easton going 4-0 is a big deal, but you have to give it to the Rams just pushing through every play. They didn't give up after being down at halftime 25-12. to Pure heart and desire to win, and that's what make a, makes a great game, Spencer. Yeah, they absolutely do look like a much improved team from the start of the year. All right, and remember, we want your feedback from all these games. There are several ways to contact us. Follow us on Twitter at 47ABC Sports and like our Facebook page, 47ABC Sports, as well. We want pictures and your reactions to these games. And keep it right here, because coming after, up after this commercial break, we are going to do just what you want to do. More high school football action coming up right now. I'm Shane Leatherberry, quarterback at Del Mar High School, and you're watching Del Marva Sports Insider. <laughs> 